my name is Katara Schmidt. I'm the manager at Millhouse Roasting Company at the Maui Tropical Plantation. We've been here about two and a half years now and we do a little bit of everything from growing to roasting to brewing. So we're in our coffee fields right now. These are our newest trees. Um, they're only a couple years old and it's an exciting time. They're all starting to flower. So we should be seeing actual coffee from these in a few months. And then we have our roastery cafe. So all of the coffee that we grow here, we roast ourselves in the cafe and we serve. We also roast coffee from Maui, from other islands in Hawaii, and we do some imports and blends too. So we get to see the coffee all the way through from the growing, processing, harvesting stage to roasting to actually brewing it for your cup. Um, so one of the things that we're most excited about that we get to do here on Maui is grow coffee. Hawaii is one of the only states in the country to grow coffee, although Georgia and California are actually starting to experiment with it, so we might not hold that title for long. Um, but the whole world drinks coffee, and this is one way that in the United States we get to be connected to the entire process from beginning to end. So for growing coffee, it's a long process, it's a huge commitment. These trees that we have here are about uh, three years old, and there's, this is the first coffee that we're seeing them start to produce. Um, coffee trees reach maturity around eight years and last to about 30 is when they usually peak, but they are a tree. They'll grow to be 30, 40 feet tall and produce until they're 100 years old if they're taken care of properly. So just getting them to grow to the stage of producing coffee takes a lot of effort. They require a lot of water, proper fertilization. And then from this stage, um, the first stage that you see is the flowering. So we have the buds starting here and these should probably open up in a few days. And they're only gonna be open for about three days. So that's the amount of time that they have to self pollinate. But we do have a lot of bees at Maui Tropical Plantation, a lot of butterflies, and they get their hands in there too, pollinating those flowers. Where each of those buds are, they're going to turn to a green bean. We call them beans, but coffee is actually a fruit tree. So it's the seed of a fruit. And when it's ripe, it looks like this. So we have red, some red coffee cherry here left over from last year's harvest season. Um, the, the best thing about uh, our processing is that everything is hand-picked. So we can select only the ripest red cherry, which means these are the sweetest, which means they have the most flavor, which means you're going to enjoy this coffee the best. I can dry the seed in the fruit like this, and that's called a natural dry. It's gonna be a really sweet, fruit-forward coffee. Or I can pulp it, and pulping just means I'm squeezing those seeds out of that cherry. Most coffee cherries have two seeds, and that's what you see here. Some just have one seed, like this one, and that's called a pea berry. It's a totally different shape. It's smaller, it's round, it doesn't have that nice flat side. Um, those are usually your, your better quality coffee. They're denser, they have more nutrition, they're fruitier, more fruit forward. But um, normally we separate these two out just by sorting them by size. So at the cafe you can buy just the pea berry and taste the difference between that and the regular seeds as well. And this is our sample roaster. So most roasteries, you have your big roaster that you do all your bulk roasting on, and then you have a smaller roaster that you test batch, so you don't ruin 25, 100 pounds of coffee at a time. This roaster is, is functional. It does one to three pounds. It's a custom-made uh, little train, which is a lot of fun. The roasting process works the same on a small roaster as it does on a big one. So you start with your green beans, put in the hopper on the top here, and then you're gonna drop those in. Uh, by pulling out this knob, they come into the drum. So this is where all of the actual roasting happens, just in this piece here. There's a flame that you, um, you would see under here if it was on, and the drum is spinning and being heated by that flame, and the coffee is tossed, being tossed around in there roasting. Each roast takes about 10 to 15 minutes. That's the only difference between a medium roast and a dark roast, is how long you're leaving it in the roaster, and then the chemical processes that happen during that amount of time. But no matter the size of your roaster, it's going to take that same amount of time. So after about 15 to 20 minutes, the roaster is using this called a trier. So you're checking the color of the beans as they're being roasted um, and they're turning. After that, after that 10 to 15 minutes, we open up the door, the beans come tumbling out into this cooling bin, and then they spin. 
um, this agitator pushes them around. You can see the screen here. There's, um, it'll be sucking cool air down through those beans. We want them to cool down in about four minutes. Um, they can come out anywhere with air temperatures around 470 degrees. So if they're not cooling down that fast, then your roast continues to develop. And we want to pinpoint that roast level just where we want it. So the great debate, Kona coffee versus Maui coffee. Kona has a well-deserved reputation for growing coffee. They've been doing it for over 200 years, but the rest of the islands have been growing coffee for nearly as long. Uh, when sugarcane was introduced after coffee, a lot of the islands, Kauai, Oahu, uh, Maui, turned to sugarcane and f made their focus on that. Kona region is an area on Big Island and it has really steep volcanic hills. So it's not, uh, it's not really great for growing things besides hand-picked coffee. Coffee grows really well in that volcanic soil, you get a lot of flavor, and it can be hand-picked on that steep hillside. Sugarcane can be machine harvested on, on flatter slopes. So a lot of the islands turned to sugarcane and Kona stuck with coffee. So they've been definitely working hard in developing their process for over 200 years. But Maui placed first in the statewide cupping competition this year and has been working as a community to continually improve the flavor of its coffee. Both coffees are grown in volcanic soil. Both coffees are grown in this tropical climate. So the major differences that you're seeing are really just between farm to farm and how that farm processes coffee. So if you're buying coffee, things you wanna look for is either 100% Kona coffee, 100% Maui coffee estate grown so you know who the farmer is, how they've been processing it, and that it's entirely from that region and not blended with other coffees. Not to say that other regional coffees are bad, but the thing about paying attention to the, where your coffee is from and how it tastes is that you get to enjoy the flavors of that region. What I appreciate about Maui coffee are the chocolatey notes, really nutty flavors, and a low acidity. So it's easy on your stomach, really smooth to drink, and what Hawaii is known for, smooth, delicious coffee. Right the way.